I attended UCL in the academic year 2019-2020 before the pandemic pretty much stole my Erasmus Plus exchange away from me. I was an exchange student or to use UCL's terminology, I was an affiliate student and I was studying history. Getting into UCL was a nightmare in and of itself, partly because of my home institution, partly because of just circumstances and also because Italy and also because of my nationality. If you're interested in hearing the details from A to Z on all of that, I actually have a video, one of my favorite videos of mine, might I just add. I'll leave it up in the cards if you're interested. However, if you've already seen that video, then you know that the difference between my home institution and UCL was like night and day and I am probably UCL's biggest fan. However, for the sake of this video, I've done my level best to try and be as objective as possible. Lord knows that was very difficult for me to do. If you're new here, hi, I'm Lamia and I make videos under the themes of education, global citizenship and sustainable development. And if any of those things resonate with you, please do hit the subscribe button because that helps me out so much more than you know. So in today's video, I'm going to be analyzing UCL under 10 categories, those being academics, diversity, reputation, administration, facilities, location, student life, exchange student experience, accommodation, and finally, life beyond UCL. Academics. So unlike Imperial and LSE, uh, UCL is not known for a specific study field. It's a good idea to study medicine at UCL and it's equally a good idea to study uh, history at UCL. And I really enjoyed this aspect of UCL because it's so uh, diverse academically. I like the idea of you know sharing an institution with students in a very different uh, study field than me. I would often bump into engineers. I shared an apartment with a you know, future doctor. And I really enjoyed this aspect of it. I can't speak to the experience of being in a university or an institution that focuses on one specific thing. But just if I were to imagine being in that kind of environment, I don't think that would keep me entertained for very long. As you can imagine, UCL is home to some brilliant faculty members. I can never get over the fact that one of my professors was quite literally the leading scholar in his field. And so I was quite literally referencing his book throughout all of my essays which he would be grading and might I also just mention this is one of the most humble people I have ever met also along the line of academics at UCL every student is assigned a personal tutor which I still kind of wrap my head around I think that's fantastic and definitely the onus is on you to you know make sure that you're seeing your personal tutor for all things academics and or you know student life and oftentimes um, I think I don't know maybe I'm generalizing here based on my own experience but my personal tutor was you know fresh out of his PhD he was very relatable to me he was I don't know give or take seven years seven to ten years older than me so this was somebody I felt quite comfortable going in to see for office hours just to to talk about all sorts of things you know even outside of academics as you can imagine with UCL being an academically rigorous institution um, it do be giving academic rigor the workload is intense you should hear it from me I don't think I've ever been that academically stressed in my life yeah it's intense but at the same time I think it's managed I later came to find out that at Oxbridge they would be doing an essay a week. That was not the case at UCL, you would not be doing an essay a week. If I recall correctly I had like an essay halfway through the course and then of course I had um, more essays at the end of the course. Take a sip of water every time I say course. The time management is essential but nothing you can't handle. However, if it really is overwhelming, I find that they're very, very understandable. I mean, we're gonna get into this later, but I later took advantage of their well-being services. And I remember my therapist who was, you know, part of the UCL uh, psychological services, I think it was called. Before I could even suggest anything, she had said to me, you sound really overwhelmed. Do you want me to write a note which will allow you to get some extensions on your deadlines? If you do find yourself a bit overwhelmed, then there are services for that as well. The diverse I mean, it's London's global university, in it. The fact that UCL is so diverse played a major role in why I chose to study at this institution. There's a really nice mix of domestic students and international students, students from quite literally all over the world. I did notice that a majority of the international students are Asian. So lots of students from Hong Kong, lots of students from China, a couple from 
Malaysia and Singapore, but I just remember running into a lot of students from Hong Kong. Diversity in terms of class is very interesting because I find that institutions are always so happy to share these metrics of how international their universities are. I think the elephant in the room is that yes, there might be students from all over the world. However, these international students who are paying these astronomical tuition fees are often pretty well off in their countries. However, in terms of domestic students, there were a lot of people from working class backgrounds, which is something I just absolutely loved about UCL. There were so many Somalis, there were so many Nigerians, Ghanaians, the whole nine yards. That being said, it's still a prestigious institution and I did in fact rub shoulders with some Etonians and Herovians. In fact, I talk more about that in a podcast episode of mine I'll leave it over here and in the description box I remember while I was in the UK interestingly enough I wanted to find out what the like what the female alternative to Eton is like what the top girls school is in in the UK and I ended up finding out that it was Cheltenham Girls High Cheltenham Girls School I remember going on a deep dive through their website and I ended up on a web page where they were showing their statistics of where the girls usually end up university wise and I kid you not UCL was the top institution where the girls ended up for that academic year which kind of changed my perspective I was like ah that kind of makes a bit more sense now I was thinking of some of the girls that were in my classes don't get me wrong they were always much nicer than the boys just my observation but it definitely put it into perspective that as global as UCL is it's still a prestigious institution which is you know um, very much an option for the British aristocracy, I guess. Reputation. UCL has a great reputation worldwide. I think it's consistently at least in the top 10. I think it's usually like ranked 8th worldwide according to QS. This is how it's been for the past few decades. I don't see that changing honestly just because of how consistently it's ranked. I hope I'm not being biased here, but I probably am. But I cannot think of any UCL slander. I mean, apart from maybe King's College students, because of the age-old rivalry and also from actual UCL students. I feel like it's human nature to never be quite satisfied. But on the whole, I would say it's a pretty chill institution. Almost everyone I met was super down to earth. I remember going to an event once which was a mix of um, LSE students, UCL students and King's College students. The LSE students were a lot more, let's say career centric for lack of a better word. I mean, people often joke that, you know, at LSE it's not what's your name as a first question. It's um, where did you do your internship? Administration. The admin is very efficient at UCL and you should hear this from me. Um, I wrote the book on inefficient admin and bureaucracy. My personal tutor actually told me once that the staff members have a 48 hour policy, meaning that within a 48 hour window, they need to have responded to an email or else there could be consequences on their part. Like how cool is that? And honestly, I can, I can pretty much co-sign that. Um, I never was having to, you know, follow up on any emails because my, my emails would be responded to. The administration is also very attentive to international students. Unfortunately, I've had experiences where international students aren't that much of a concern. So for me, it was, you know, so refreshing to be treated the same way a domestic student would be treated by the administration. And as I mentioned, I was there in the academic year 2019-2020, which means I was at UCL when the pandemic first hit and I cannot sing their praises enough. Their communication during the early stages of the pandemic was impeccable. I cannot fault anything. They were communicating everything, letting us know, you know, there were some exceptions. Unfortunately, this didn't concern me because I was an exchange student, but they were making exceptions for some of the domestic students in terms of essays because they knew that everybody was just moving around and we were all, the whole world was in a bit of a frenzy and I love that the institution was so professional about it. Facilities. UCL is very well funded and on top of that, I think it's one thing to be well funded and another thing to use those funds really wisely. And again, I'm a big fan of the way they use these funds. There are tons of study spaces that are really stunning on top of that. If you're into aesthetics, I'm going to post a picture of 
a staircase leading up to um, one of like the main libraries. I remember the first time I ever saw this. I'm so glad there was a banister because I needed something to hold on to or else I might have fainted. It was just oh so beautiful. Everything is just so well maintained. Um, there's the law library which is stunning. There is the humanities library. There is the institute of education. There are just so many study spaces not to mention the notorious student center. I was so excited because I arrived at UCL just in time to abuse this facility. I think it was only complete a year before I arrived there. I believe building it was approximately one million pounds. Like I said, the funding is put to good use. Uh, the student center, just what can I say? Uh, definitely deserving of its popularity. There are Islamic prayer rooms, meditation rooms, a cafe, a Japanese garden. There are even showers in the student center for people who like pull all-nighters because uh, that definitely happens. It was almost me, but I, I was really fortunate in that I lived quite literally across from the university. But more on that in the accommodation section. Also the student center, the best part of it is that it's 24 seven. At night, there's actually security guards patrolling who will come and, you know, oftentimes just, well, not disturb you because who doesn't love a good security uh, restriction, but they will actually um, request that you show them your um, UCL identification badge. So the security is definitely something that uh, I was just in admiration of. I really liked the security aspect of it. There are also other facilities. There's the canteen, the refractory, I believe it was called. Um, there's like a pizza place, which is so popular near the science department. There is a gym. There is a theater with lots of musical instruments. I cannot think of any facility that anybody was in want of. Um, my roommate was really big into sports. There was unfortunately no space for a basketball court, but there would be, you know, taken in UCL transport every week to the basketball court and yeah I just cannot think of any facilities that any student was in want of. Location. UCL as I mentioned is located in central London. The location honestly couldn't get any better. It is within close proximity to the British Museum, the British Library, the Wellcome Trust, King's Cross Station, Tottenham Court Road, Goode Street. There are also other universities like SOAS and Birkbeck which which are in close proximity. So it's kind of like a nice student area where all the students from different universities are kind of like merged together. Its location is great if you live near campus because of course like the, everything is within proximity. I remember if I had the day off and I wanted to feel like I was outside of the UCL bubble, I just had to do a 15 minute walk quite literally up Tottenham Court Road and I was on Oxford Street feeling more like I was, you know, back in London, London, as opposed to being in the UCL London bubble. And if you live off campus, it's still super well connected. There are popular tube stations very close by, like Euston Station, Tottenham Court Road, Good Street. You feel like you're in the middle of everything. And even while there, my roommate and I were constantly reflecting on how lucky we were to be living on Gower Street, because we knew if it wasn't for subsidized student accommodation, when else would it be possible that we would be living on, you know, Gower Street. Student life. I'm not even exaggerating. There were over 100 student societies to choose from, including the very important Beyonce Appreciation Society. Honestly, there was something for everyone. I love London so much because I never felt guilty. There were people who felt like misfits because like there's literally something for everyone at UCL and also within London. UCL spoils their students so much. Uh, when I was there, we had a six month free um, Amazon Prime voucher and we had a six month free LinkedIn learning voucher and we were in student accommodation. I remember when I arrived there, there was like a welcome box with like so many little trinkets in this box and a calendar and just like they really spoil their students. And I'm thinking of one particular day, which I think I'm gonna blow your mind with this. I still, I don't know, a few years later, I don't know if I can fully comprehend. Thank goodness I took a picture, which I hope I find for the sake of this video. If it were not for that picture, I would, I'd probably be thinking, I just like had a dream about this. So one day, I remember it was a Friday actually, I was walking through past Portico, which is like the beautiful front building, which everybody, you know, identifies UCL with. And I remember just seeing this, um, this black Victoria's Secret bus. And I remember pulling somebody in the line to be like, what's going on here? What's this about? And they were like, um, if you want a gift bag from Victoria's Secret, just like join the queue. Just remember being in disbelief. And then I saw like some girls coming out with gift bags and I was like, what even? And it was so unfortunate that I was actually on my way to a class 
um, I was really dashing off. So I couldn't join the queue and benefit from this very cool initiative that UCL did for its students just because. Also, as I mentioned previously, uh, UCL's uh, mental well-being services were great. I took advantage of them. I think, you know, you can assume that with these services being linked to an institution, how effective can they really be? But actually, my UCL therapist has set my expectations so high because she was just so fantastic. And if for whatever reason you cannot find um, what you're looking for at UCL, then like London is literally at your fingertips. You can travel London far and wide until you find what you're seeking. That being said, that is a double-edged sword. Because UCL is located in London, it can actually be incredibly difficult to um, find a community. And if you don't have like set friends, then you can find yourself being incredibly lonely. This is semi-autobiographical. I've actually never experienced loneliness the way I did in my second semester in London after my friends who were also exchange students, but unfortunately for one semester and not the whole year like me. Um, yeah, it was incredibly difficult to make friends, even for someone like me. I consider myself really to be a friendly person. I mean, so much so that it, one point in time my Instagram handle was Lamiable which translated from French quite literally means like the friendly the friendly one um, it was hard for me to make friends and all of my attempts kind of failed when I talk about student life I obviously have to mention the elephant in the room which is that not one of us can deny that London is très cher London is so expensive, unprovoked. However, um, I'm living proof that you can live your best London life on a budget. Let me keep it a buck with you guys. There was a point in time, yeah, once I got into the zone of everything and I was settled, I was living on 300 pounds a month, minus rent, of course. Some may even say I was living quite extravagantly. So I'm really chill when it comes to food. I can eat the same thing every day and I'll, I'll be fine. Um, I'm really not bougie when it comes to food. And I remember it would feel like I was buying the whole of Aldi and then my um, bill would always come up to 13 pounds even though I felt like I was buying the whole of Aldi. So there are ways to navigate student life um, on a budget in London. Almost anywhere you go you will be able to get a student discount be it restaurants, be it clothing shops, uh, museums, galleries, like student discounts are a real thing that you should 100% abuse. That being said like I mentioned this was in the academic year 2019-2020 and from what I hear, the inflation is inflationing and I don't know if it would still be possible to live on £300 a month in London. Exchange student experience. To my understanding, UCL still has a lot of opportunities for students to do either one semester abroad at UCL or even up to a year. They are super efficient with paperwork where it concerns exchange students. You're not treated as an afterthought. In fact, you can tell it's not their first rodeo dealing with exchange students. Throughout my experience at UCL, I was 100% treated as a actual UCL student. There was no discrimination. I mean, there was that one time, um, and since we're here, I'm going to tell you the story. Um, it was with a lady who was working in administration. So it was the group of um, Erasmus Plus students in the history department, like myself, you know, in this welcome introduction, to welcome to UCL event. She said uh, not to expect to receive any two ones, upper second class grades. Um, because she said those were incredibly hard to attain, true story, and even UCL students themselves um, really ever got them. As if that wasn't enough, she then turned to me and looked directly at me and said, even if English is your native language. And I was a bit taken aback by that. I thought it was quite unnecessary. When I left, my transcript did have to go through her as like the administrative person for the history department. And um, let's just say two ones, she was correct in saying that they are hard to attain, but she was incorrect in saying that it was impossible because it was possible. Accommodation. UCL has a wide range of accommodations to choose from. You can have a single room, you can be in a twin room, you can be closer to uh, campus or you can be a bit further like in Camden. You can be in the type of halls where you're catered for or you can cater for yourself. I was in Arthur Tattersall house and you know it was everything you could need, nothing too fancy, nothing extra. I really liked our kitchen, it was very spacious and it was like a mirrored kitchen. Everything on this side was everything on this side and it was very nice because I think my flatmates and I just had this unspoken rule that like depending on which way from the kitchen, our kitchen was in the middle of our uh, our apartment, and depending on which side of our which side of the kitchen your 
room was that was kind of like your side of the kitchen there were about seven of us in my student accommodation two pairs of us were in um twin rooms and the other three people were in single rooms i was in a twin room because i really had no issue sharing a room with someone and i do want to mention that ucl's um accommodation staff members are just spot on so in order for them to match you up with someone you fill out a questionnaire slash quiz before arriving just general questions what do you like do you like music do you like loud music that kind of thing i don't know what wizardry is going on there but they got it so correct I mean, my roommate and I got on like a house on fire. That is my bro for life. She's still a huge part of my life even three years later. I don't know, maybe I was keeping my head in the sand, but I did not hear of any experiences where someone was unhappy with their roommate. As I was mentioning, the accommodation staff are just super well accommodating. I also remember a situation where I would not have my rent ready in time. I'd need one more day. You can hear about that story again in that other video. And I was so frantic and I really thought that like I'd be homeless for the night, but they were so understanding. Like they, if anything, were like, bro, why are you so stressed? Can you chillax? So my roommate and I, unfortunately, in our first semester, we got the short end of the stick in that we were placed on like a side of the apartment that did not see natural light and we had construction workers Monday through Sunday outside of our um, room and it was actually smaller compared to the other twin room so when our flatmates were moving out because they were just there for the semester my roommate and I put our heads together and we're like we need to just uh, find the courage from somewhere and we need to go ask if we can if we can change rooms so that you know the new exchange students who'd be coming would go into our old room and they'd never know we went to like our house mistress if you will and she all she said to us was sure but can I ask you why do you want to change and we just looked at each other and we were just like well there's more space and there's natural light in the other room and she's like, yeah, sure. When do you want to move? And finally, life after UCL. The career services at UCL just has my full admiration. They constantly have different companies and organizations coming to do career fairs in like cloisters. They even have themed weeks. So I remember when it was government and policy uh, week, I took full advantage. I was going to like an event every single day. Um, I remember specifically this one event where they brought this like think tank to talk to us about influencing policy and what it's like getting into that career field. As you can imagine, these things are highly beneficial, especially to domestic students who are British nationals. If you're an international student, of course, there would be a bit more hoops for you to jump through, you know, i.e. visa sponsorship. Nonetheless, it was just so nice to have these kind of opportunities to get this insight into industries that you are interested in. That being said, the career services were, you know, always available by appointment um, and they did their best to try and help you. Of course, with London being London, and UCL being located centrally in London. Students had so much access to so many large organizations and companies that are headquartered in London, which of course is great for life beyond UCL. And finally, they did have an alumni portal. I will be honest and say that I never gained much from the alumni portal. And actually, I don't know anyone that has benefited a whole lot from the alumni portal. So I hope in the future that this is something that UCL will improve on just because the alumni is just so diverse and so rich. I know at Oxbridge, they take the alumni uh, very seriously seriously it's not uncommon for alumni to be called back or to be given awards at Oxbridge and I hope that UCL maybe takes a page out of Oxbridge's book. So there you have it, my best attempt at staying objective on all things UCL. As you can tell, this is an institution that has my deepest admiration and I don't see that ever changing. To prospective UCLers, I will advise you to just to put your best foot forward. I know that the acceptance rate can be so daunting, but um, not to be that guy, but to be that guy and never in a million years would have thought I'd be sitting here making this video. Um, so put your best foot forward and just give it your best shot because you'd rather live with rejection than regret. I think it's always better to live with rejection than regret. To current UCLers, please take full advantage of everything offered to you. Imposter syndrome is guaranteed. By now you might, like me, have met a 19 year old who has already been involved in translation work with the South African government. Don't dwell on the imposter syndrome. Actually just use it as inspiration to 
talk to people to find out about their different life stories and also to expand your own horizons just whatever you do don't dwell in the imposter syndrome you're smart enough to be there because you got accepted and you're in the institution and they didn't make any mistakes you 100 percent uh, belong there to ucl itself love your work love everything that you stand for but like can we have a few more scholarships for international students especially at undergrad level please and thanks i have loved everything from scripting this video to filming it because it was a great opportunity for me to channel my nostalgia into something that is hopefully useful to you all thanks again for watching and i'll see you guys on the next one